I have pretty strong opinions about Gibson's brand and how they use it as a weapon against people who want to belong. <laughs> an incredibly lazy opinion. Epiphones are for people that can't afford Gibsons. Epiphones are compromises. I have two Epiphones that we need to rub in some people's freaking faces. You need to subscribe. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. I run this channel, I talk in this room a lot about guitars, and I want you to know more about what we're talking about, and I want you to hang out, and I want to get to know you. Lots of us buy guitars because we get lazy opinions from people on the internet, and I understand I am a person on the internet, but I try to help you cut through the noise and the crap and find the right guitar for you. One of the ways I do that is I have a course that you can check out called Right Guitars Faster. It's a full-on video course that'll teach you everything you need to know about buying the right guitars, selling the wrong guitars, and building a meaningful collection. <laughs> We should talk about this video is sponsored by Sweetwater. I got this guitar uh, from them to talk about and they are paying for this video. Now they pay for my time, they don't pay for my opinion, and then the other one they didn't pay me at all for is another guitar. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, well, let's talk about it now. The second guitar that's coming here in a second is an Epiphone Casino. It's made by Gibson. This is an American-made casino. It is amazing. And now back to the guitars that we should rub in people's faces. Number one is an inspired by Gibson Epiphone 59. And so this, there are there is no guitar that I've ever dreamed of, hoped for, wished I could have owned more than a Les Paul from Gibson. In 2003, I was in 10th grade and every day I would go to the library and this is I mean this is very early in streaming music on the web on the internet but I would go and I would sit in the computer lab at Spotswood High School in Virginia and I would sit there and I would go to the Coheed and Cambria website and I would play the song The Crowing <laughs> I would listen to this song over and over, and then I would go to the musician's friend. I, this is before tabs, you had to open another window, and so I would go to another window, and then I would play, I would go to the musician's friend website, and I would look at a black Epiphone Les Paul Custom. That is the guitar I wanted. I wanted a Black Beauty so badly, uh, because it was just so cool, and I loved the curves of it, and I loved the hourglass shape. I loved the headstock contour. I loved the big block inlays. There's so much about a Les Paul that just captivates the mind and hearts of players, and they still do. Now, there is this whole crazy thing of Gibson versus Epiphone, and if you buy an Epiphone, it's a compromise. Let me talk about a guitar that has minimal compromise. This is a 1959 Les Paul. Now, this is an inspired by Gibson Epiphone, one of the limited editions. Now, this guitar is heavy. This is a full fat Les Paul, big maple cap, big mahogany back and sides, big neck. That's one of the biggest things on this is they really tried to capture the feel and the vibe of a bigger, rounder neck. Now, this is definitely not for everybody, but for me, and I think a lot of people, as you start playing, the longer you get into it, most people will eventually come around to a bigger uh, U-shaped, D-shaped, C-shaped neck. Um, let me see, I threw three letters out there. This is a C-shape, but it, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's got some, some meat to it. Now, the other thing that is so cool, and one of the things, um, if you want, if you doubt that people feel like they are missing out because they're not buying a Gibson, look, just go to Google or go to eBay and look for uh, Epiphone headstock conversion kits because you can find them everywhere. It is, few brands have the ability to make uh, people feel so bad about not owning one as Gibson. And that bums me out. It's one of the reasons I don't own, I don't own any Gibsons right now. Well, okay, tech, I own this Epiphone Casino, but I don't own any Gibsons, and most of it is it, and I've been well documented on this. I have pretty strong opinions about Gibsons brand and how they use it as a weapon against people who want to belong. And I, it's just gatekeeping. At the core, essential level, it is gatekeeping, and it bums me out. So one of the things they did is they converted the Epiphone, it used to be a smaller, more kind of hourglass shape, I'll put it right here, if I can just, whoo, I'll bring up the old Epiphone headstock. Now they've changed the headstock, and so it really feels a lot more like a Gibson, and so that's one thing that it is cool, it probably was time for a change with that. Now it does have 
pretty traditional Cluson style tuners. Now in here, this also has full on American Gibson humbuckers and they sound awesome. Two volumes, two tones. This guitar is meant to be very, very similar uh, to a proper American Gibson. And now the thing that gets me, the place that most of these guitars are always limited is the hardware. And so that's the biggest thing as they've done the Inspired by Gibson, they've brought up the quality of the tuners, the quality of the hardware, because most people, you could get an Epiphone and then for a couple hundred bucks, you could swap out pickups and harness. And what they've done is they've just saved you the trouble of that. And so this guitar, I believe they're $899. They might be more than that. They might be $1,000. It also comes with an amazing case that I'll show you. It's a per, it's a tan case with a pink interior. It is so cool. And uh, they've done a really, really good job with that. The only thing I have to say negative about this guitar in particular is the finish. The finish does still feel like there's a bit of a compromise. Now listen, to get this quality of guitar, a neck set, mahogany back and sides, uh, maple cap, to get this hardware, all of that. I mean, they're putting real money into this. And I think if I'm honest, Epiphone has put way too much value into this guitar um, for the price that it is, because it's really hard to make a case that you should spend four times the amount of money for basically the same guitar with a better finish uh, that's made in the US. Those are the two things that, that's, that's the thing that I just, I don't know if I can mentally jump that hurdle. Now, so when I look at the finish on this, it is, it's still a satin finish. Now it is, there's some gloss to it. Like I can kind of see my hand shining in it. Let me see if I can, yeah, you can get a little bit of it. And it definitely is better than normal, but on the back, I mean, this reminds me, I used to have a, uh, an SG, a G400 Epiphone years ago. That was like 400 bucks and the finish on the back and sides was this. The same color, same kind of matte. Now it's not bad, but I mean, it's, it's a polyurethane finish and uh, it's just, it's very normal. It's what I would have expected from Epiphone for this long. Now, all in, this guitar is awesome. So let's hear it. I'm gonna play it and I just want to see your reactions and uh, tell me in the comments down below, is this guitar, is it too much value? Uh, what do you think about this? Is it still a compromise? All of that.
If you can resist the bait to take someone else's opinion from the internet uh, and formulate, formulate your own opinion and see this guitar for what it is, it's amazing hardware at an amazing price and it's a really cool guitar, has some cool vibe and cool uh, styling, the case is really cool. If you can see it for what it is, I don't think that there's another guitar that quite packs this much value at this price point. <laughs> by Gibson let's just talk about straight up built by Gibson this my friends is an Epiphone Casino made by Gibson in Tennessee now this is a full-blown like the best that it can be uh, amazing American made full hollow guitar now this guitar is so quintessentially tied to the Beatles that the Epiphone Casino has always and will always or will for still a long time is going to be just I don't want to say overvalued, but it will hold a value at a level that other guitars just don't seem to because they're just so connected to the Beatles and they're so iconic. Like you look at this, I mean, this thing, you know what it sounds like just by looking at it. Now, this guitar through just the amazing community and friendship that's built up around my YouTube channel, my friend Daniel got this and just the way it worked out, I had a guitar, had a right Luthery jumbo that he wanted and then he had this and we just made a trade and I... I am tickled pink with it. Speaking of pink, this comes with a super cool, it's like a gray silver on the outside, kind of a bluey silver. And then on the inside is a full on like pink style case. It is so cool. So this guitar, if you're an acoustic guitar player coming into the electric world, and I've done this, I'll usually tell people, hey, you should get a Telecaster. But the reality is, if you want a guitar that's big, if you want a guitar that feels pretty musical, that's pretty jangly, that's pretty open, I mean, kind of hard to beat, um, an Epiphone Casino. Now, the other thing is it has a shorter scale length, so it's a 24 and a half inch scale length, so it feels jangly, and it feels like an acoustic guitar, and it's also just a big shape and size. So this guitar is just so cool. I love the two-tone burst. I love this big E on the pickguard. To me, this is the place where you get to just rub it in people's face and just own the fact that you play an Epiphone. I play an Epiphone because they're amazing, and they're so cool, and this is, you know, in Gibson, in all of its showboating glory, this E gets to just fly as a flag of just saying like, hey, it's a working man's guitar. It's a cool guitar. Now, this is still an expensive guitar. These are about $3,000, $3,100. And, uh, but to me, it just doesn't get much cooler than this. So let's listen to this. And I think that I, I'll land the boat with some of my thoughts on Epiphone as a brand, but this is an Epiphone Casino and it is so cool. Check it out now. <laughs> My closing thoughts on Epiphone guitars, do not take the bait. Like, I think it's a lazy opinion, and these two guitars can show you that you can shove it in the faces of people that say, only a Gibson's good enough. Now, there is a place for Gibson. I love Gibson guitars. You've seen me talk about them. But don't take the bait that if, you, if you're not a real guitar player and you don't have $4,000, that you're only ever going to be compromising by buying an Epiphone. For what this is, for a studio guitar, for a student guitar, for someone that's playing out that wants 
crazy, tenacious, wonderful Les Paul tones, don't be an idiot. Get one of those. Like, they're so good. There's so many great options that are way more affordable than a full-on Gibson Les Paul. If you want a Gibson Les Paul, if you can own it in a way that it does not give you an identity, if it doesn't uh, take away from the financial life of your family, do it, have at it. Now, if you can, and I'm super excited that I got this and I had to be clever and sly and I use the tricks that I teach in Write Guitars Faster, whether inspired by Gibson or built by Gibson, these Epiphones come to play. They are fun, they are playful. I'm super excited to own both of these. Now, this one is probably gonna move on because I just, I don't need a humbucker guitar. So if you want this, let me know and we can make a deal. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. Thanks for watching this video. Have fun, fill the world with music and friendship. That's what guitar hunters do. They offer kindness, friendship, wisdom, and excitement. And you can do it. So, thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. See you later.